All right, turn signal turned on. The car is going to start moving over into the left lane here. And oh, it went back for some reason. And now it's okay. Now it's going to do the lane change. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Will here from All Electric back again with another video. And if you remember one of my last videos covering 24.4, I went over autopilot lane changes and how it was getting stuck on a particular road. So I just got a new software update. 2019.28.3.1 and in this update it actually fixed the problem that I was having going from the right lane to the left lane with these lane changes. So in that video I'm going to show you what autopilots do with regards to lane changes in this new update. Later in the video we're also going to go over a couple really exciting products related to the Model 3 that I'm excited to show you guys. Okay, before we get into lane changes, I wanna talk about single lane performance. I'm not seeing a lot of the phantom braking like I was with these shadows, and that really started in 24.4, so it's nice to know that we are not regressing and we're at least staying the same. It does handle this road about the same as 24.4, and I am excited to perform the curvy country road test again when I can get over to that part of town. Now, here is what didn't happen in 24.4. Going from the right lane to the left lane, and if you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna put a link up there for you, and you can see I initiate the turn signal, and the car is going to move right over, which in 24.4 on this section of road, for whatever reason, would not move from right to left, but only left to right. And you can see there, there was no lane lines because it was passing through an intersection, and the lane change was actually aborted. Really smart. The school signs, however, did not abort the lane change. And you can see when the lane change from the center display, when it goes to dash, and then that right line will turn to solid, and the middle line will be dashed, meaning that whatever lane line that the car is gonna cross over will be a dash lane. So I really encourage you to go back and look at my last video where it would not let me do a lane change from right to left, which right here, with the newest software update, it is allowing me to go from the right lane to the left lane. So it looks like Tesla was able to solve whatever problem they were having with this lane change on this particular road. Several of you guys commented in my last video saying that you were having the same issue on this same style of road with the older 24.4 update. So if you guys have gotten the newest update, let me know down in the comment section below if this has also fixed the problem that you were having with regards to doing lane changes. So here a lane change is performed to get into the turning lane and I'm in autopilot still, which is kind of cool. And as I enter the intersection, you're gonna see that the car recognizes that it's in an intersection and it says take over immediately. Now this is a brand new paved road and they just have little tiny little flag markers for the lanes and autopilot is able to recognize that even though yes, they're using the data from the cars around it too, but just really cool how it's able to drive and be engaged on a road with very limited lane lines. So I would say that the lane changes are just as cautious as they were before and they're just as good so you can see here this car is in red meaning that it's in the way and then after the car gets out of the way the car is going to complete the lane change i feel very safe when i'm using this to change lanes and most of the time it's better than what i see people around me doing so here we are we're making a lane change now this is not navigate on autopilot i do not have that engaged right now because i don't have a destination set you can see me manually slowing down although the car does slow down past my max speed here because it recognizes that it's heading on a clover leaf and making sharp turns, which in my curvy country road test, we see it do the same thing. So around this curve, just in regular autopilot, you can see it's got two blue lines. Navigate on autopilot is one blue line. So here we're gonna do another lane change to merge onto the highway, and this is all being done manually. This is not navigate on autopilot. This is for those of you out there that don't have navigate on autopilot and are just doing this uh, with regular autopilot. If you're interested in nav on autopilot, I'll put a link to one of my videos that I did with navigate on autopilot up here. So you can see it does a phenomenal lane change waiting for that SUV that's now in front of us to pass the car before it initiates a lane change. So here you see me reach over, pull down on the drive stock, and the car moves right over. I have noticed that these lane changes, especially on highways when manually input, meaning I turn the turn signal on, have become a lot faster as long as you know it's clear, obviously. So it's almost like it's getting more confident with 
changing lanes on a highway. Now on a smaller road like this, I did notice that it takes slightly a little bit more time and sometimes even like right there, kind of hesitates and second guesses itself before it actually makes the lane change over. Now let's go back from the left lane to the right lane by putting the drive stock up. Once it passes through the intersection and that white SUV is out of the way, then it's gonna initiate the lane change over. Very safe, moving very well in this new update. So here we're gonna go from right to left and you can see that there's a car there, so it is red and the line is dashed, meaning that it wants to make the lane change, but now that it is clear, meaning the car sees that the SUV is no longer in the way, then it will move over. Really smooth compared to some older software updates. Now, getting into like a turn lane like this is not perfected yet. You can see I manually have to take over, even though in this large turn lane, then I can re-engage autopilot. So you see right there with the blue steering wheel, two blue lines, I'm in autopilot still. So we're gonna slow down the speed, the light turns green. Let's see if it makes a left-hand turn. Um, it's thinking, yeah, I gotta take over. So if you've seen my left-hand, right-hand intersection turning autopilot video that I posted a couple weeks ago, I'll put a link up here for that. Uh, that's pretty cool to see. It's, it doesn't work in all intersections, but it does work in some of them. So we're making a left-hand change here, and you can see it just does a really smooth, great job. Some of the previous versions of the software when you were making lane changes were a little bit jerky, but this newest software update is really smooth. Now let's switch gears real quick. I got a couple exciting products to show you. Since I bought my Model 3, it's always bugged me that the back door didn't have the same beautiful metal badge on the door sill, but now, thanks to Amazon, link is in the description, of this beautiful metal Model 3. It's miniature, so it's not as big. They give you cleaning cloths, so it's super easy to install. Simply peel off the back tape and then line it up wherever you want it and press down firmly. And that's it, really super easy to install. And I think it really looks a lot better and it finishes it off. You can see the matching front versus the rear. I mean, it just really finishes it off and it looks nice. I'll leave a link down in the description for 15 bucks. It's really worth it. The next product I have to show you is something that I really wasn't that excited about, but my wife wanted me to get because I often throw dirty stuff in the back of my Model 3. If you remember from one of my previous videos, this is the same material, same company, same brand as the Model 3 floor mats for the interior of the car that I did. Now this is the trunk mat, which is nice because it matches like the same design and everything, same thickness, it, a really good quality mat. But my concern with getting a trunk mat was I would lose access to that bottom space under there, but it's really not that big a deal because this trunk mat can easily fold it back and then you can put the compartment there and then put you know your groceries or whatever kind of heavy stuff that you don't want rolling around like if you get a watermelon or you pick up a medicine ball uh, at the store and you don't want it rolling around while you're driving that's primarily why i like to keep it open so i can use this area but it definitely folds back allowing access to this area very easy and once you get everything out from there or if you want to put more stuff on top and stuff is underneath there it folds back out, very simple. So it is nice to have the trunk mat if I'm gonna throw something dirty in the back of there like some tools or something like that. Makes it very easy. It's also easy to come out too, as you saw there. It's very effortless to take in and out. And you still have access, you know, because you can still see that top part of that little hook. So you're not losing any functionality with your trunk. Now, there is another exciting product that I found while browsing for these trunk mats, and that is this bag. Now, hear me out, it's not just a bag. So this is designed to go in that bottom compartment in your trunk. So it fits perfectly in there, and it has a lot of functionality, and it's really sturdy. So the company that made this bag really thought long and hard about this bag. It, as you can see, it folded up real nice, and it has all these fantastic pockets on the outside of it. And not to mention that like this thing is sturdy and large on the inside. So it's got little dividers so you can divide up certain sections of the bag, which makes it nice. And it really fits a lot of stuff. So let's put some stuff in the bag. So I have some stuff in my garage that I'm gonna throw in this bag just for demonstration purposes. And I really like how it divides up. Now here's the coolest part of the bag because it keeps its shape. So if you have something fragile, 
uh, you can put it in there and then put it in that lower section of the trunk and it will be completely hidden or you know you can put more stuff on top of the trunk but still have easy access to all this stuff by simply pulling on that hook and if you just wanted to grab like a tool out that you needed and you could just grab that tool and all of your stuff would still be organized nice and neatly in that lower portion of the trunk. Now I love how it fits just perfectly in that bottom section. I really do. And you can just pull the whole bag out if you want, um, but it does work a bit easier to pull the bag out and also put it in when you have that lower panel kind of tucked away and the trunk mat rolled back up like you see here. So it is a bit easier to pull out. But I thought, so we go to Aldi, which is a unique grocery store. They don't bag for you. They don't have bags by themselves. So I was like, let me take this bag to Aldi and see how well it does with, you know, like folding itself up. And you can see I'm trying to do this while holding the camera. And so we folded up the bag and we're walking into the store. But first, always park your car far away from everybody else. And what a view. Let's take a picture. Okay, so we're walking in Aldi and now we are going to get our groceries and throw everything that we got at the grocery store into our trunk bag. And you can see here, all these little compartments are going to work great for all the stuff I got because we don't want our chips crushed. We put our eggs by itself and we're just gonna throw it right on top there and it's nice and rigid. So we have been using this for groceries on a weekly basis and I do really like this bag. Now I do think it is a little expensive. So I reached out to the company and they actually gave me a 20% off code for those of you in the US to use on Amazon. So I'll put that down in the link below and that also applies for this trunk mat. It's from the same company. So how sweet is that? So you can get 20% off both the trunk mat and the trunk bag. And so the code that you need is all electric and that's no spaces, just capital A, L, L, capital E, electric. So I'll leave that discount code down below in the description right next to all the links for these products that you've seen in the video. If you wanna see all the products that I use to make these YouTube videos and all the products that I recommend, check out my Amazon shop. The link will be down in the description. If you like this channel and you like the videos, please consider going over to Patreon and supporting this channel for as little as $1 a month. Thank you so much to all of you that have already gone over there and decided to support this channel. It really does mean a lot. I couldn't do this without you guys. There's so much great content specifically to Patreon, so make sure you go over there and check it out. Patrons at higher tiers also get early access to YouTube videos. I want to give a special shout out to our man Amin and Akram Atul. They are both supporting me at the all electric level. Thank you so much for your support. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Share this video with a friend and I'll see you guys in the next one.